Center, the Barnard Center for Research on Women, was founded in 1971. There was just an incredible excitement about feminism at that time. We needed to be able to think about how to do research that encompassed women's lives, that we needed to understand gender as a social relation. There was no site to have those conversations, and there was no one that asked people to bring their thinking forward around it. The Barnard Center for Research on Women was, as far as we know, the first of its kind. The center provided a meeting place for feminism that was happening both in the academy but all across the city and in some ways all across the, the country, even internationally. The great thing about the BCRW is that there's like this whole history of the women's movement at your fingertips. The first permanent director was Jane Gould, who was at the time working at what is now the Office of Career Development. She was deeply concerned, obviously, with the question of getting Barnard students into careers. Since that time, we have worked on all kinds of questions about women, violence at a transnational level, domestic violence, reproductive justice, thinking about racial and economic justice, uh, gender and sexuality. It's all about intellectual work that has scholarly integrity and that is publicly important in some way. I consider my work black feminist work very concerned with questions of activism and feminist uh, practice and so a place like BCRW that combines both theory and praxis is, has been really important for me. For the fact it's access to interdisciplinarity and I know that I don't have to translate the kinds of languages of my specific disciplines. It's the place on campus where you go if you have a kind of ideas that transcend department and program interests. One of the things that came out of the BCRW board was a desire to focus more on transnational work and specifically on supporting the transnational work that the faculty are already doing. Right now the idea is that we'll have three topics that we will get a transnational group of uh, faculty artists and activists together to work on over the course of time. We serve as a bridge institution in some ways between the, the type of academic work that is happening in the, the individual faculty's scholarship and uh, broader world. There's a false dichotomy between scholarship and activism. Scholarship is activism. To educate is activism. The Barnard Center for Research on Women has a fundamentally um, singular commitment to activism coming to the campus and being a part of the campus as well as engaging outside the campus. The National Domestic Workers Alliance is an alliance of 33 local organizations of nannies, housekeepers, and caregivers for the elderly, most of whom are women. The New York groups went to the Barnard Center for Research on Women and asked them if they would be willing to host the very first national conference. We worked with them to document their activities and we were also working with them on framing the issue and how it was understood. We made a historic breakthrough in passing legislation in New York State to recognize domestic workers. This work with Domestic Workers United is an example of the type of knowledge production that the BCRW does. It's those kinds of powerful connections that allow us to be more than the sum of our parts. QEJ's mission is to embed sexual orientation and gender identity in the work of class and race. Working with the Barnard Center for Research on Women became a convening site to bring together people who were doing remarkable organizing work. It's a model for other academic sites in how to engage with social justice and the possibility of social change. We formed so many partnerships with different mm -hmm. activist organizations in New York City, with different scholars all over the country, even all over the world. I mean, think about every semester we have lunchtime lectures, we've got panels, we've got you know discussions, we've got speakers coming from all sorts of fields. It really says something to you know bring a woman in who's a, who's a leader in her field and show students here this is a possibility, this is an opportunity, and you need to seize it. There is this repeated desire on the part of the uh, mainstream press to declare feminism dead, and the means of addressing issues does shift over time. Uh, so that, you know, uh, big feminist marches down Fifth Avenue are not what's happening right now. It, there may come a time when they happen again, uh, but there is an incredible wealth of activity that's happening online. We're a part of that. We have a um, journal that's called Scholar and Feminist Online. Uh, we want to be, you know, putting our material out there. We want to be part of that dialogue with the podcasts and 
um, the videos of our events, we're able to bring them to a much wider audience. So that kind of online cultural production provide new means for feminists to do what they've always done, which is connect with each other, talk about important issues, decide what needs to ha change in the world, and make that change happen. Well, the PCRW brings together women and men, young and old, activists, scholars, professors, and recently bloggers, students, to really feel like you know, there is a community out there. To have thrived for 40 years is an amazing achievement. And that now is the time to actually think that this is a long-term project that we do, in fact, want to think ahead 40 and 50 years. The future of feminism is dependent on people who are informed, women and men. And I think um, the, the ones that are informed, it's kind of, it, it is their duty to go out there and educate people. It's both continuity and change. We still work on things that were taken up in those early years, but often in different ways.